How does Ethernet work? To explore this, we conducted a simple experiment utilizing Ethernet to control an LED. Here is a simple block diagram of the system that we are going to build. On the PC, we have the Hercules program as a TCP client. We learned how to use this in the previous couple of videos. The PC is connected to the FPGA board with an Ethernet UTP cable. On the FPGA board, we have a TCP server application built with Python to receive messages from the PC and control the LED. We also learned how to control the LED in the previous couple of videos. Now, before we move on to the practical experiment, we need to take a deeper dive into the theory. So, how does this system work under the hood? In order to understand that, you need to know what the OSI and TCP IP models are. They are conceptual frameworks used to understand and describe how communication occurs within computer networks. The OSI model has seven layers, from the physical to the application layer. The OSI model corresponds to the four layers of the TCP IP model. Each layer in both the OSI and TCP IP models describes how different types of data, such as bits, frames, packets, segments, etc., are processed at that layer of communication. The specific role of each layer determines how data is formatted, encapsulated, and transmitted across the network. The OSI and TCP IP models are like blueprints. The real implementation of each layer is called a communication protocol. You may know some or all of the example protocols listed in this diagram. These protocols are implemented using programming languages as software code or even as hardware designs, such as microchips. For example, the physical and data link layers are usually implemented as hardware chips or on an FPGA. The network and transport layers are usually implemented in software, but they can also be implemented in hardware when low latency is required. The same also applies to the session, presentation, and application layers. They are usually implemented in software, but can also be implemented in hardware, such as on an FPGA or a chip. Now, let's use the OSI model to explain in more detail what happens under the hood in the system we are about to build. First, the Hercules program is an application that accesses the TCP connection, which operates at the transport layer, layer 4. This application connects to the TCP IP stack, layers 3 and 4, which is implemented as software in the Windows or Linux kernel. The program and TCP IP stack run on the processor, which can be either Intel or AMD. At the hardware level, specifically in the PCB of the motherboard, the processor connects to the Ethernet Mac and Phi chips. The Ethernet Mac is layer 2, and the Ethernet Phi is layer 1. The connection is usually made via the PCIe bus on the motherboard of your PC or laptop. Then, this chip is connected to the RJ45 connector. On the FPGA side, it is similar but not exactly the same. On FPGA boards based on Zinc, these chips are usually dedicated to Ethernet Phi because the Ethernet Mac is already integrated into the Zinc chip. The TCP IP stack is implemented as software in the Linux kernel. Finally, we have a Python program that accesses the TCP connection to receive data. This Python program also controls the LED. Now, let's move on to the practical experiment. We already have the FPGA files for the GPIO that can control the LED. We worked on this in the last couple of videos. Now, we only need to create a Python file for the TCP server. Create a new directory for the Python code, then create the Python file. We can add the libraries for FPGA programming and the TCP application. This function is used to program the FPGA, initialize the memory map of the GPIO, and turn off all the LEDs. Next, we add a function to process the command received from the PC. The command is stored in a variable named data. If the command is 1, then the LEDs will be turned on. 
If the command is zero, then the LEDs will be turned off. Otherwise, it is an invalid command. Next, we add a function to handle incoming connections from the TCP client. Finally, we call the FPGA programming function and start the TCP server. Now, let's try running the code. It turns out that there is an error. This error occurs because we need root permission to program the FGA. Use the sudo command to gain root access and activate the pink virtual environment. Now, try running the program again. The TCP server is running on the local IP address and port number. Open the Hercules program and connect to this IP address and port number. Now we can test by sending one to turn on the LEDs. Sending zero will turn off the LEDs. Sending any other values will result in an invalid command. What we've done in this video is create a TCP server application that allows a TCP client to control the LEDs on this board. The communication is made via an Ethernet connection between the PC and the FPGA board. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and share. See you in the next one.